This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Saturday, April the 27th, 2019. It's the feast day in the traditional Roman calendar of St. Peter Canisius, or St. Peter Canis in his native Dutch. He was a major force in northwestern Europe during the Counter-Reformation era of the late 16th century. He was born in what is now the Netherlands in 1521 and connected in school with St. Peter Faber, one of the less well-known founders of the Jesuit order. Canisius became the first Dutch Jesuit and eventually one of the most influential churchmen of his time. In 1591, he suffered a stroke which left him partially paralyzed, but it didn't stop him preaching or writing. He died in December 1597. Today is also the commemoration of the Virgin of Montserrat. Now, Montserrat is in Catalonia, the very, very, very independence-minded region of northeast Spain, which includes Barcelona, or Barcelona if you prefer. So Our Lady of Montserrat is the patroness of Catalonia. She's actually the co-patron with St. George. But the Spanish are a very Marian people. The image and the mountain are both important to the faith of the Catalan people. Now, the Montserrat has actually been the faith center of the region since the Romans called it the province of Hispania Ulterior. They built a temple to Venus there, which stood for centuries. When Christianity was legalized, the temple was replaced with a church. In the 12th century or so, an image was placed there in which the Virgin and the Christ Child have black skin. And this was a fairly common thing in the Middle East, and so the image was very possibly moved from Jerusalem about the time of the Islamic conquests. Given the Muslim invasion of Spain at the time, there may well have been some reason, spiritual or otherwise, that the statue was installed. It was quickly nicknamed La Morneta, the little dark-skinned one. Since then, the Catalans have loved Our Lady de Montserrat and trusted in her intercession. And it's not just the Catalans. The Basques next door are also big fans. St. Ignatius of Loyola made the trek from Pamplona to Montserrat as soon as he was able. It was there that he laid down his sword and shield and went forth to found the Jesuits. The hymn to her is Beloved, and it begins... Rosa d'Abril, Morena de la Serra, April Rose, Dark-Skinned Lady of the Mountain. Our Lady of Montserrat, ruega por nosotros. Finally, today is the birthday of Casey Kasem. Born in 1932 in Detroit, Michigan, Kasem's parents were Lebanese. But unlike most Lebanese at the time, they weren't Catholic, they weren't Muslim, they were Drutza, Unitarian. Kasem's parents were serious about assimilation into American life, and so they didn't allow the kids to speak Arabic at home, and the music on the radio was always American pop. In his teens, Casey Kasem listened to a program called Make Believe Ballroom, and he knew he wanted to be in radio. He started out with high school sports commentary, and then he worked on classics like The Lone Ranger. In 52, he was drafted and went to Korea, where he volunteered and worked with the Armed Forces Radio Korea. After that, he moved from smaller markets to larger ones as a DJ and later as a headliner. In 1964, Dick Clark took notice of the up-and-comer and and hired him to co-host a daily pop music show called Shebang. Casey Kasem was the incarnation of the perfect radio voice. He did some live acting and some voice acting, but his heart was in radio. And on July 4th, 1970, he launched American Top 40. It was a weekly countdown of the top pop music of the day. And Kasem's perfect voice, his quippy trivia, and his short segments like Long Distance Dedication and Flashback gave American Top 40 something special. He ended every program with his signature sign-off line, Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.